My name is Alec Perry. I'm an agricultural consultant operating out of the SAC office here in Ayrshire. And today we're here for a bit of an update on the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme. So the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme is Scottish Government's flagship environmental uh, programme and has been running for a number of years now. The scheme offers land-based area payments and capital support for environmental outcomes and is part of Scottish Government's commitment to nature-based solutions in the face of climate change and biodiversity decline. The scheme opened on the 24th of January and for most applicants the deadline will be the 29th of April. For those businesses who are part of a larger collaborative project, they'll have an extension until the 31st of May. And for businesses seeking support for slurry storage, um, the deadline is the 24th of June. When we're looking at the options that are available through EECS, um, I would encourage any interested party to use the Rural Payments Online Search tool. Um, each location code across Scotland will have a list of eligible options that's applicable to their farm um, and it's important that uh, you're aware of what those options are and what the management requirements around each of those options entail. We anticipate that this funding round will be highly competitive. Um, this is down to a number of factors but mostly the, due to the, the fact that uh, we've now had a restricted funding round in 2021 and a period of no new applications in 2020. So we're going to be dealing with a, a backlog of interest and the level of interest is, is just much higher than we would normally find. When we're looking at the options that are available across Scotland, generally what we find is that they are tied to regional biodiversity priorities. So when we're talking about the east of Scotland, a, a very well cropped area, a lot of arable farming going on, we're looking at options to do with the sustainable management of our soils, um, implementation of rotations for, for arable cropping, um, grass margin creation, hedgerow creation, the establishment of wild bird seed crops um, and the retention of winter stubbles over, uh, over the winter period. And then when we're looking at the west coast, predominantly we're looking at ground nesting wading birds, we're looking at corn crake, corn bunting, chuff, depending on where you are. Um, these are all national priority species and uh, applications targeting um, their benefit and their enhancement will be looked upon more favourably when it comes to scoring. Um, it's important to note that EECS is a competitive scheme and uh, just to reiterate that we're expecting a high level of demand for applications this year so we're really looking to, to build strong applications with, uh, with high scores. We're looking for applications that are benefiting designated sites. We're looking for applications that are prepared to set aside a considerable proportion of their farm towards environmental outcomes. We're looking at businesses which have a high collaborative component, um, so businesses that are working with uh, a network of farmers in their local area to achieve the same outcome. And we're also looking at uh, businesses that are uh, providing good habitat linkage and connectivity across the farm. On behalf of all of us here at the Farm Advisory Service, um, good luck putting together your applications and we wish you all the best. Rising feed costs make it more crucial than ever to understand the quality of your own silage and how to make the most of these homegrown forages. Mary Young is a ruminant nutritionist at SAC Consulting and explains why you should get your silages analysed. The reason it's important for farmers to analyse their silage is that most rations in the winter are based on grass silage in the UK um, and there's a lot of variation between silages and uh, between different farms. And so in order to have an accurate ration for your cattle and make sure you're meeting all their requirements, you need to know the base of that ration first. So if you've ever read a feed label before, it always states this is a complementary feed to forage. Um, so that's what you want to do with any feeds that you buy in. You want to make the most of your homegrown forage and complement it appropriately. There are a number of factors that can influence the silage quality, including from before cutting all the way through to the ensiling process. Some of the factors that can affect silage quality, the weather of course has a big effect on the dry matter of the silage, uh, when it was cut, 
If it was an earlier or later cut, that will have an effect on your energy and your protein quality. Things like fertilizer applications, what the mix of the sward is, if you've got a lot of herbal lays and clover in there, and your contractor's availability as well will have a big influence. Overall, and um, the silages that we've received at the SAC lab, we've taken a summary of that data. Um, in 2021, the silages unsurprisingly have been higher in dry matter. So analyzing above 35% dry matter, about three quarters of all the silages that have been analyzed have been above that level. Um, so, so quite dry. Um, and in terms of the quality of the forage, Energy and protein have been pretty good. The first cuts analysed are around 11 me, um, second cuts about 10 and a half me, so fairly good energy wise. Um, in terms of the protein, there has been kind of an interesting trend with first cuts analysing slightly lower in protein. So other factors like the predicted acid load has been lower in these higher dry matter forages because there hasn't been as high a fermentation, the lactic acid's not as high. Um, things like the silage intake potential, which is called the SIP on your silage analysis. This tends to be higher in the higher dry matter silages, um, so you'd expect the animals to eat more um, of these higher quality high dry matter silages. With these high dry matter silages, uh, it's important just to be aware of some of the risks, especially at feed out and at the pit. So making sure you have a nice clean pit face um, and Ideally working across the pit every two to three days, you might need to take half grabs um, and using your, your shear grab or a block cutter just to keep it nice and tidy on the, on the face. And if you're feeding bales as well, not leaving those out for too long that you could get spoilage um, or mould. As we head to the spring months, we need to start considering our animals which are transitioning through their latter stages of pregnancy. So especially for your sensitive stock, like those that are in calf or in lamb, you have to be careful if you do see any visible mould that you discard that from the silage and you aren't feeding that um, to in calf or in lamb stock. And just being aware of the, the risks that there can be other mycotoxins that you can't see in other areas of the silage. In the run up to calving and lambing, obviously that's at the forefront of most people's minds, making sure your ration is providing enough energy and protein. Obviously you need your silage analysis first to work out um, what's being provided in the base of the ration and then complementing that with the most appropriate supplement, whether that be a ewe roll or suckler roll or homegrown feeds if you have your own cereals or protein sources. And the last thing you want to do is to compromise on our energy and protein in that high demand period. Um, so making sure that you're meeting her requirements as she's making the colostrum production, the, the growth of the, the lamb and the calf in those last stages as well, maintaining her own condition as well. If you are moving to forage that is lower in protein, if you've had a lot of straw in the diet, for example, a lot of suckler cows will be fed a mixture of silage and straw, so that may need to be readjusted just to make sure there's not too much straw that's diluting that protein lower than you would expect. Hopefully, at the start of winter, if you've done your forage budget, keeping that better quality forage closer up to uh, close up lambing and, and calving uh, just to help reduce the reliance on concentrates. The last thing that you want to do is compensate on the energy and protein requirements in that vital last stage of pregnancy when colostrum production is happening and in use there's a high demand for the lamb growth in the last few weeks and they're growing the woolly coat as well so they have a high demand for protein so we want to make sure that they're getting what you have uh, formulated in your ration. So you need a good, accurate silage analysis. So if you look at our average figures from SAC, um, any of the silages that have gone through the lab, um, they'll not match perfectly with these figures because they are just averages. Um, so it's really important that you get your own farm analysed so you can see what kind of quality your forage is and you can um, complement that with the appropriate supplement if required and you can see where there's any shortfalls or excesses um, particularly with this year with the feed prices um, it, it's more important than ever that you're making the most of your own homegrown forages which is the cheapest feed available um, but you also want to make sure your animals are performing to the targets that you want. 
Ralph Seaton is the scientific manager at the SRUC Veterinary and Analytical Lab, where silage and feed samples are sent for analysis. We do uh, about 6,000 samples a year, and that's split between the wet chemistry testing and the NIR. Wet chemistry testing will cover things like uh, sugars, starches, fibres, um, oils, etc. And uh, they, they require to be uh, milled and dried and then put through the classical chemistry testing. We also do NIR testing, which is a, a scan on the sample as received. So that's actually quite quick and we normally would turn those around within a day if possible. Silage analysis in general, if you're looking at uh, the chemistry side of it, that can take up to a week because obviously you've got to dry the samples down, mill them and then put them through various instruments to get your, your uh, analysis results out. With the NIR samples, which we can do for, for um, grass silage and a few others, uh, basically we'd be looking to have that result out within the same day of receipt. For silage and feed analysis, there are two techniques which can be performed to determine the nutritional value. These are near-infrared, NIR or wet chemistry. Ralph explains the differences between the two techniques. NIR is near-infrared scanning. So basically what it is, is uh, we, when we load the sample in, we progressively scan the sample from 750 nanometers to about 220 nanometers. And basically that then produces a fingerprint of that silage, which we can then compare to the equations that we've got stored within the system. And that then generates the, the results. So on the, the wet chemistry side, what we would do there is we would uh, dry the sample down, mill it, and then we have various uh, chemicals that we use to extract the various nutrients from it, etc. So, for example, when we're doing protein, we have to uh, digest that and then distill it so we get the, 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 the nitrogen out. Um, and for uh, trace elements analysis, for example, what we would do there is we would actually digest those in a fairly aggressive, a fairly aggressive way. Um, it can be nitric acid uh, in a microwave or it can be aqua regia. And then those samples, which are uh, an acid matrix, get fed into our ICP. When samples arrive at the lab, samples need to be checked that the information matches the submission prior to any testing. When uh, samples arrive at the lab, uh, first and foremost, they're, they're booked into our laboratory information management system unless they've been pre-registered by uh, one of our offices. They then go through to the sample processing sites where the guys will unpack all the boxes and make sure that the submission papers tally with what's come in. And then uh, they'll start preparing the samples. So for uh, normal uh, chemical analysis, those samples would then be uh, sorted, dried, then milled. And for NIR samples, what hap the wet NIR samples, what happens is that they then they mix the sample up so it's uniform and then they, they put it into uh, moulds to create uh, sample sausages to put into the NIR and scan. The advantages of NIR over wet chemistry, first and foremost, it's quick. Um, it's also cheaper, but it's, it's the speed because obviously if you've got a, a farmer who's wanting to uh, calculate his feed for his animals, it's far better if you can get that straight away so he knows what to supplement the, the silage with. With the wet chemistry, it can uh, analyse samples that are uh, more mixed, so it, it's not just grass, it can be have clover mixed into it, it can have peas get mixed into these, uh, and we don't have equations for those at present. So that's when we put them through the, the, the more full analysis. With wet chemistry, we can deal with a far larger range of uh, forage samples uh, because obviously uh, the, the NIR is mainly grass, although we are expanding it with, with certain other equations. In addition uh, to the, the different types of silage, we often find that some of the samples that come in for uh, the NIR are actually too dry for NIR. So we would also contact uh, the client and say, 
the recommendation is that this is going to be go for uh, wet chemistry as well. Accuracy of results produced by the lab is important in ensuring that farmers receive the correct information about their silage and feed. So the lab is part of the FAA, which regulates all laboratories carrying out feed analysis. With regards to accuracy of results, we are a, a UCAS accredited laboratory. So uh, the, the, all of our testing is covered with the same protocols, whether you UCAS accredit or not. So we have external uh, EQA samples that we analyse and then report back to third parties. Uh, with the, the silages, uh, we get samples that come in and we analyse those uh, blind and then the results are reported back to the FAA and they then uh, will analyse those results against actual wet chemistry and then they'll report the results and then what they do is they grade all of the laboratories um, regarding how close they are to the wet chemistry results. Farmers and advisors can go to the website and they can uh, see the, the list of grades on a monthly basis and uh, they can see where, where the labs are sitting. We are sitting within the A class, the A grade, uh, because our results correlate very well against the uh, gold standard uh, chemical testing. Hello, I'm Raymond, joining you remotely this week due to COVID reasons, and welcome to the Rural Roundup. ARPID have opened up the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme for 2022. Some options have been removed this year. The deadline for an application which includes public access applications, is Friday the 29th of April. For collaborative new applications with five or more businesses, the deadline is Tuesday the 31st of May. The deadline for standalone slurry storage applications is Friday the 24th of June. Please log on to the Rural Payments and Services website for more information. Remember that EECS has been extended to 2024 and will have an annual application round. Next up, Producers in the less favoured area will be happy to see that LFAS payments started arriving in banks on the 26th of January. The payment rate is now back up to the full level of 2018. And finally, this year there will be no paper SAF or IACS forms produced by the Scottish Government. All producers will need to complete their SAF online using the Rural Payments and Services website and online portal. If you completed a paper IACS last year, then please use this time in advance of IAX to visit the website, click register in the top right hand corner, complete your personal details, submit, then follow the steps to claim your offline identity. Remember that the IAX window opens in mid March and closes again in mid May. Stay tuned for more from FAS TV and the Farm Advisory Service. Mm -hmm.